Hi everyone, how are you? It's Dr. Spickle, functional podiatrist, human movement specialist, founder of UBFA Global, and inventor of Naboso. So today we are speaking about optimizing our glutes from the ground up. And I'm gonna go into two powerful ways in which you can get even more out of your glutes. First way is going to be a biomechanical way. So the mechanics of how our feet connect to our legs and to our pelvis is really important when we're understanding how to optimize our glutes. Now this is going to be through our foot movements, our subtalar joint, creating rotational transverse plane power all the way into our pelvis and our glutes. So I'm gonna get standing up and you can stand up with me if you'd like. So when we stand up, what I want you to first do is pay attention to my feet or your feet if you're joining me. If I stand with my feet shoulder width apart and I go all the way to the outside of my foot and then I roll onto the inside of the foot. So I'm just gonna go back and forth between the outside and the inside. So right now, I and you are moving the subtalar joint. Now this is a joint in the foot that is very important for locking and unlocking the lower extremity. When we go to the outside of our foot, this is called the inversion and this is a locked, rigid, stable, powerful position. When we go to the inside of our foot, this is going to be unlocked, unstable, but it's actually how we load energy. So power, and unlocked loading energy. Release energy, load energy. And we go back and forth like this through every movement that we do. Technically, this is called inversion, and this is called eversion. Now, as we move our legs from outside to inside, do you see how my legs are actually rotating? My knees go in, my knees go out. My knees go in, my knees go out. Now, put your hands on your glutes and keep doing that. Do you feel that every time you do that, that that rotation continues all the way up into the hip? Actually, if I go all the way to the outside of my foot, I can feel like my pelvis is tucking under. And then if I go towards the inside, do you see how my pelvis wants to roll forward? So this is a posterior tilt and then an anterior tilt. When I go into a power position of my foot, my pelvis goes under. When I go into a unlocked loading position of my foot, my pelvis goes forward and my knees rotate in. So these are called joint coupling. And the joint coupling is how you transfer power quickly through your lower extremity from a biomechanical perspective. Now your glutes are very powerful hip extenders, but they're also very powerful external rotators. So this combination of hip extension with external rotation is actually how you drive power into your hips. A lot of people think about glutes as hip extension, right? I'm extending my hips. However, you might not realize, but every time you are extending your hips, you are actually externally rotating at the same time. And the more that you can drive external rotation moments into your hips and your glutes, the more power you can activate. So how do we do that from the ground up? Guess what? We optimize this position of the foot. Now you don't have to literally go onto the outside of the foot because this is mechanically not really appropriate as well. I'm not gonna walk around like this, right? This is kind of how primates walk. But there's this moment where you want to invert. You invert your foot through an exercise called short foot. So short foot, which is the activation of getting our toes into the ground, actually drives a lift of the arch. And every time you lift the arch, you invert your subtalar joint. Every time you lift your foot and you invert your subtalar joint, you externally rotate your tibia to drive it into the hip. You do that while you are doing an exercise and you get external rotation, little tuck of that pelvis, activation of your glutes. An example of how I would tie this in, let's say I'm doing a back squat. I got some load behind me, I am here. I'm going down into my squat. And then when I'm on the bottom of the squat, I'm gonna push my toes into the ground. 
As soon as I push my toes into the ground, I lift and I lock my rear foot. I'm then going to push up while my toes are pushing into the ground. And then as I come up, I'm going to imagine, visualize, and feel the external rotation into my hips. So again, we're inhaling as we go down, drive the toes down, exhale, lift, and then release. Okay. Now, if you cue, lift the toes to get your client's hips back or your own hips back, totally fine. You can keep doing that. But as soon as you're down, drop the toes, drive them into the ground, lift into the power of the hips. Okay. Your second way that we're going to activate. The second way that we get more power into our hips and our glutes is going to be through fascia fascia lines. Now there's a saying that your glutes are only as strong as your core is stable. I don't know who made this up. Maybe I did, but your glutes are only as strong as your core is stable, which means we got to get that lumbo pelvic hip complex stable, which means we got to get into our deep core and the way you breathe your diaphragm. The way that we're going to do that is through your deep front fascia line. Your deep front fascia line connects from the tip of your toes, across the bottom of the foot, around that lower leg, adductor, pelvic floor, diaphragm, boom, back down to your psoas. And it actually continues higher up to your tongue. So this pathway is activated with short foot. So we're going to be doing that exact same cue, but this time, when you push your toes down, you're going to think about lifting your pelvic floor, specifically your posterior pelvic floor. So let's stand up again, get into our position, feet are shoulder width apart. Now, as you push your toes into the ground, you might start to feel a little bit of tension activating in your deep core. Slight bend in your knees, slight tuck of your pelvis, and I want you to lift your posterior pelvic floor for me. The cue to lift your posterior pelvic floor is lifting your levator ani, or you could think of stopping your poo, okay? So I'm going to lift my levator ani, and as I do that, my toes are going to push into the ground, and then I'm just gonna release. So again, lift the levator ani, push your toes into the floor, and then release. Let's do that again. Lift the levator ani, toes go to the floor, and then release. Your breath should be part of this as well. So your breath would come in with a exhale, I'm lifting my posterior pelvic floor and my toes went down. So you're going to continue pelvic floor, toes down simultaneously, but you're going to hear the breath and you're going to do the exhale. So shh, right? I lifted and I pushed my toes down. Shh, perfect. Now, how you build that into a exercise such as a squat? Got our back squat again. We're coming down, we're squatting, we're down on the bottom of that squat. My toes go down, boom. As soon as I pushed my toes down, my levator and I engaged. If, you, if that's not happening, you have to consciously train that initially, and then you keep that foot to core connection, shh, and you lift out of it, okay? So we have this combination of a biomechanical and a fascial stabilization between the foot and the pelvis to optimize our glutes. The mechanism is the same, or the cue is the same, which is short foot, but you have a biomechanical influence and you have a fascial influence. Let's do it one more time. You got your squat. You're coming down. Maybe you lift your toes if you want. Sometimes I like to do that as well. I'm inhaling as I come down. My toes are down into the ground. Boom, I engaged my posterior pelvic floor. I lifted my arch. I start to have this external rotation moment through my tibia. Shh, and I am here. Boom, my glutes are on fire. So the way that you can start to use this is think about the way that you're activating the pelvis and the glute structures. Are you giving cues that are from the ground up? Are you thinking about foot placement? Are you thinking about foot type? Are you thinking about their arch? Are you cueing breath? Are you activating the toes? Are they barefoot? Are you bringing in sensory stimulation? So there's so many powerful ways that you can upgrade a simple exercise such as just a squat and get it even more activated biomechanically, fascially, sensory. Whew. It is intense. If you want to learn more about how you can incorporate from the ground up queuing, check out any of EBFA's education. We are both virtual, live, in person, and online. Head to ebfaglobal.com or follow ebfa underscore barefoot education for more education. Take care. Stay barefoot strong.